It is Wednesday, March 13th, and the Splash Zone is back in your life. I am Matt, a.k.a. Jedi Modi, and I'm here to give you my four favorite NBA player props for today's NBA betting slate. Normally for these NBA player props, I try to find a bunch of plus money bangers. That's what we did yesterday, but today all four are of the minus money banger variety. That's just how the board fell. But I'm very confident in the four plays that we have uh, today. And we are riding hot after an incredible day yesterday. So if you notice that I'm extra giddy this morning, it's because yesterday we had just an amazing day. Amazing, amazing day yesterday. Continuing the hot streak that we are on over the past week. We were down on Monday, but we had been profitable the four straight days prior to that. And then we had a 5-0 and day yesterday. I gave out three picks on the YouTube channel. All those three cash. So if you only watch the YouTube video, you still were able to sweep the slate. And then I gave out two picks over the course of the day. I posted them on my Dub Club, which is only five bucks a month. And then I posted them for free on uh, Twitter as well, a little bit after. And both of those plays cashed as well. We cashed SGA under six and a half assists. We cashed Jalen Brunson, eight plus assists, four plus money. We cashed De'Aaron Fox over two and a half made three pointers for plus money. We cashed Dante DiVincenzo over three and a half made three pointers. And then we cashed Malik Monk for uh, over two and a half made three pointers as well. That was only a half unit play, but that one we still were able to cash. We ended the day yesterday 5 0, up 5.3 units yesterday alone, which is just incredible. The success we had yesterday. Ladder plays weren't quite as good. I only got one of my four ladder plays to cash. But thanks to how juicy the odds are for these ladder plays, we mostly broke even up 0.02 units. So I'm just calling that a break even on ladder plays. An amazing day overall. Hopefully we can continue the streak today. Again, I have four more plays for you guys. If you are not already, I would highly, highly recommend subscribing to my YouTube channel. I keep waiting for the shoe to fall, the shoe to drop, and us to go on a prolonged cold streak. But it keeps not happening. So I'm going to keep holding it off as far as possible. So again, would recommend subscribing. And then for this specific video, if you could like, if you could comment, that stuff helps me out a ton, especially after a day like yesterday. I appreciate all the comments that I could get just so we can kind of get this in front of as many people as possible. Hype up these good days whenever we have them. And then on the entire season, obviously the success that we're having is incredible as well. It wasn't just yesterday. We now crossed the 70 units of profit mark yesterday. We're up 70 0.71 units on the entire season and then on ladder plays specifically which i just started tracking on uh, february 24th we're up 5.86 units i wish i had been tracking that on the entire year as well but i just started tracking it at the end of february but hey we're still up almost six units on ladder plays so that's very good obviously the success is amazing let's hope we can keep it going you're only as good as your most recent banger so let's get into today's picks let's see if we can splash around and get wet the first play that we're going to go ahead and lock in here, this is in the Bulls versus Pacers game. And I'm taking Tyrese Halliburton under 19 and a half points. This is best offered at minus 120 odds at FanDuel. So Halliburton was the darling of the NBA at the beginning of the year, leading up until the play-in tournament. He was playing a fast pace, amazing basketball. He was getting up a bunch of assists. He was making step-back threes and then skipping down the court. But he's been pretty, pretty slow recently. Since the play-in and then since he uh, injured his hamstring against the Celtics earlier this year, he hasn't quite gotten his form back. He hasn't quite just been able to take over a basketball game like he was prior to that. And that's both from a playmaking and a scoring perspective. Now, he has gone over this point total in two of his past three games. But overall, he's missed it in seven of his last ten. He's gone under this number in seven of his last 10 games. So the fact that he has gone over in two of his last three, that actually makes me feel better about taking his under because people are going to see that and think, oh, he's back, which I'm not buying that. And this is a pretty tough matchup tonight against the Bulls. They just don't give up a lot of points to point guards, right? I have a bunch of numbers I'm going to tell you guys. All you really need to know, if you don't care about the nitty gritty nerd math stuff, is they don't give up a lot of points to point guards. According to Courtside Pal, the Bulls give up the second fewest points per game to both his shooting and his scoring profile. That makes sense when you dig into the numbers. On the entire season, the Bulls are allowing the third fewest points per game specifically to point guards. And in terms of how Tal Tyrese Halliburton scores, that's where the Bulls are stingy as well. That's kind of what Courtside Pal is telling you. The Bulls 
give up the second fewest points per game specifically to pick and roll ball handlers and they give up the second fewest points per game uh, via transition as well. Now looking at Tyrese Halliburton, the most important thing here is the pick and roll, right? He scores the most points per game via pick and roll for the Pacers by far, as the main pick and roll ball handler, I should say, by far, right? By far, not even close. He scores 9.1 points per game via the pick and roll. The next closest guy is TJ McConnell at 5.2, almost doubles him up. He also scores the second most points per game via transition as well on the Pacers. That one isn't quite as meaningful as the pick and roll one, but it still is something. And if you're wondering why the Bulls are such a tough matchup, specifically for point guard points, it's because of the way they play defense in which they send a ton of help. And they have one of the best on-ball guard defenders in the NBA in Alex Caruso. Alex Caruso rarely gets broken down by the dribble. They're about middle of the pack in terms of giving up points via isolation. But if he does, either the team sends a pick and roll or if he does get beat off the dribble, the Bulls are very aggressive in sending help, right? They're either crashed down from the wings or the big man will slide off of his man to contest the ball, contest the shooter at the rim, either leaving a nice Kobe assist or leaving just a, an actual assist for the point guard to the big man whose man has left him. So they give up a ton of help and they also rarely get beat off the dribble when it's Alex Caruso guarding the point guard, which he's not probably going to take the uh, Halliburton duties in this game. That also does leave a lot of assists for point guards as well, but I didn't like the assist play for Halliburton. Instead, I liked his under points. That's our first play. Let's hope that he comes through for us by not scoring a lot of points. Next up, we're actually sticking in the same game here, Bulls versus Pacers, and I'm taking DeMar DeRozan over 23 and a half points. Minus 120 odds is the best price at Bet MGM. So we're sticking with the same game, this time going with an over for DeMar DeRozan, who's actually sneakily been a wagon for us recently. I didn't go with him a lot most of the season, but recently I've gone with him, I think, three or four times. I think four, and only once he has, he has not come through for us. So let's hope he stays hot again in what should be a really, really juicy matchup for him against the Pacers. Side note, Unabated, who I recently have started looking at in their market-based projections specifically, they, they project player props and point totals and stuff like that. They're projecting DeMar to score over 25 points. So there are they, they are in favor for our play tonight, which is a great sign for us. And that makes sense, right? Another matchup play that we're, that we're going with here. According to Courtside Pal, the Pacers give up literally the most points per game to his shooting profile and the fourth most points per game to his scoring profile. And similar to Tyrese Halliburton, just in a over as opposed to an under, it makes complete sense. Look at where the Pacers give up a lot of points and then look at where DeMar DeRozan scores, right? The Pacers allow the second most points per game in the NBA in the restricted area. Now, DeMar doesn't get to the rim a ton, but he still takes the fourth most shots in the restricted area for the Bulls. So that's not the main reason why we're on DeMar, but that's not a bad point either. The uh, Pacers give up the fourth most mid-range attempts in the NBA. They give up the most points per game in the NBA to isolation players. They give up the most points per game to pick and roll ball handlers, the most points per game to players via handoff, and the third most points per game to players off screen. They're a horrible, horrible defense, right? And DeMar, that's how he scores, right? He scores in isolation or he scores as the pick and roll ball handler. And he scores via the mid-range pull-up, right? The Pacers are giving up the second most made pull-up shots from two-point range specifically. That screams DeMar, right? He's the mid-range merchant. He takes and makes the most mid-range shots for the Bulls by far. Takes and makes. Also on the Bulls, he scores the most points on the Bulls via isolation. He scores the most points on the Bulls as the main pick and roll ball handler. With Zach Levine out, he also scores the most points on the Bulls via handoffs and the most points off screen as well. Really the only area in which DeMar doesn't score the most points on the Bulls is in the restricted area, but he still attempts the fourth most shots. So basically every area except the restricted area where the Pacers defense is weakest is how is the player in which DeMar scores the most points in those areas for the Bulls. And as I mentioned, he's been playing great recently. He's gone over in seven of his last 10 games. He's gone over in 12 of his last 15 games. Now he did miss it last game, but he only played 22 minutes in that game because the Bulls were blown out basically in the first quarter. That's unlikely to happen again tonight. And we also get to fade recent results because he just went under. So I love DeMar in this one, the over 23 and a half points. Very confident he's going to cash it for us. Next up, Nuggets versus Heat game. I'm taking Michael Porter Jr. over 
two and a half made three pointers, minus 115 odds at bet 365. So I did give this play out last night. So if you already locked this play in, do not double bet it. Just leave it as you bet it last night. This is not meant to be a two unit play or anything like that. But the odds are still pretty reasonable, which is why I'm giving it out on YouTube as well. And this is going to be a ladder play for me, taking him to make four plus three pointers at plus 220 odds at Fandle. And I'm putting a half unit on that bad boy. So these two teams just played at the end of February, and I had this same exact play. I had the over two and a half made, and I had the four plus made ladder play. And that catched, right? He made four three pointers against the Heat, and the odds are just as good as it was that game. Obviously, the logic is basically the exact same as well, so I figured I might as well run it back. And for those of you who are new to my channel or didn't watch that video or just forgot because it was like two weeks ago at this point, basically the logic is Michael Porter Jr. is the main catch and shoot guy for the Nuggets on the entire season. And recently, if you just look at the data since the All-Star break, he's attempting 4.9 catch and shoot three pointers per game for the Nuggets. That's the most by far. The next closest guy is a full uh, attempt and a half below him at 3.2, and that would be KCP. Uh, my MPJ has also been shooting well since the All-Star break as well. He's making 2.2 of these shots, of these 5.9 shots per game, shooting 45% on catch and shoot three point opportunities. And that's pretty good for someone with a decently high volume, volume, excuse me, volume. He also takes and makes the most corner threes and above the break threes for the Nuggets as well. Now th those are mostly via catch and shoot. Sometimes it's off the dribble, uh, but yeah, he takes the most corner threes and above the break threes for the Nuggets. So basically saying he just takes and makes the most three pointers for the Nuggets. And as good as the Heat defense is, the one area in which they are the weakest when you compare them to the rest of the NBA, it's allowing catch and shoot three pointers and specifically allowing catch and shoot three pointers from the corner. They allow the fifth most um, corner three attempts in the NBA, the ninth most above the break three point attempts. So definitely weaker on the corner three number, still top 10 allowed in both. And then in terms of catch and shoot, they're allowing the fifth most both made and attempted three pointers as well. Last time these two teams played, Michael Porter Jr. went 4 of 10 from 3. That was on February 29th. Overall, he's made at least three three-pointers in four of his last six games. And three times in that span, he's made four three-pointers. So let's run it back from a couple weeks ago. Let's hope he cashes uh, for us once again. Next up, fourth and final pick of the video, Lakers versus Kings game. De'Aaron Fox over 27.5 points, minus 110 odds at Bet Rivers. I'm also going to ladder him to uh, 30 plus points for plus 133 odds at Bet Rivers as well. And that's going to be a half unit play. This is another situation where Unabated is in line with us. They have him scoring over 28 points. And this one's another situation where their market based projections do help confirm this play. Not that that's the end all be all, but it's just nice to be on the same page as them. Well, obviously not the latter play, but the mainline play at least. And I know that we just went with Fox last night. But at least he came through for us, right? He made four three-pointers, cashing both our main play and our ladder play as well. And I'm not A, I'm not scared off by him being on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. And this is just such a good matchup against the Lakers that I think it's worth riding with De'Aaron Fox once again. He only played 33 minutes last night, and he averages like 35, 36 per game, so a little bit less than his season average. And if you look at how he's played recently, specifically on the second half of back-to-backs, He's been playing really well. He's scored 28 or more points in three of his last four games on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. And in the one game he missed, he scored it exactly 27. So we would have gotten hooked in that case In that case, and cashed the other three. And as I mentioned, it's such a juicy matchup for De'Aaron Fox against the Lakers. He's cashed the over 27 and a half points in all three games against the Lakers this year. He's actually scored 30 in two of the games. Last time these two teams played was ex exactly one week ago, and he scored 44 points. If we go back to last year, he's scored at least 28 points in six of seven games against the Lakers. It makes complete sense. You got to dig into the matchup. According to Courtside Powell, the Lakers are giving up the fifth most points per game to De'Aaron Fox's shooting profile. And the reality is the Lakers defense is not equipped to handle point guards with speed, which is exactly, obviously that's De'Aaron Fox, right? He plays lightning fast. The guards on the Lakers, look who they have. They have Prince, Vanderbilt, Reeves, D'Angelo Russell. None of those guys are quick twitch athletes. So speedy guys like Fox are able to have their way with the Lakers in terms of points. 
and that's evidenced by his scoring history against them. That's evidenced by the fact that they give up the fifth most points to his shooting profile. So I love riding with De'Aaron Fox once again tonight. Hopefully he comes through for us in back-to-back -back nights. That would be electric. And that's all we got. Four plays for you guys to lock in. Again, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And the last thing I'll mention, I mention it at the end of every video. I do have a dub club, which I also did mention at the beginning of the video as well. It's only five bucks a month. And basically the way it works, I'm not trying to sell you on some VIP picks package or anything like that. The way it works is everything that I give out on dub club for five bucks a month, I also give out for free either on YouTube or on Twitter. My logic for the dub club is you get everything texted to you immediately. So for YouTube, some people will get frustrated because they've watched the video and the odds would change. Or sometimes people just don't have time to watch the YouTube videos or they just don't care. So they're like, hey, I want to tell you, but I don't really care about all the YouTube stuff. Can you just send me the pics? So I have the dub club five bucks a month. Again, you get everything texted to you immediately. You don't have to wait for the odds to change. You don't have to watch the YouTube video or wait for me to post on Twitter or anything like that. As soon as I decide on a play, the first thing I do is send it out on Dub Club so you can make sure to lock in the same odds that I do. But whether you want to pay five bucks a month to get them texted to you, or you'd rather just get them for the best price of free via YouTube and Twitter, either way is totally fine with me. I just like giving people the option. And that's all we got. Appreciate everybody for watching and have a good one.